Here, I wasn't on the rotation with any other PA students. I was the first PA student that this particular site had ever had. So it was like really a heavy burden on my shoulders. I was like, oh my gosh, I have to like, I have to do this for the PA profession. Oh, doing my dance. Hey, I'm doing my dance. Don't mind me. I'm doing my dance. What's up, you guys? This is Adana. Welcome back to my channel. You guys, I have done it. Um, but before I get into that, I just want to welcome you all to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have not been on my channel before, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know every single time I put a new video out, which is every Sunday. Anyways, for those of you who have been, me, been with me for like the last pretty much two years now we've been doing this thing, I am so happy, you guys. I am just a few short weeks away from graduating. happy okay I just finished my last rotation which was primary care and that is what this video is going to be about so I'm gonna talk about every single thing that I've done on my primary care rotation and just give you a play-by-play -play on what a PA student does on their rotations at least what I did so for primary care I started my day out at 8 it was from like 8 to 5 was the typical hours we had an hour for lunch which I rarely ever took um, because like I said before in all of my outpatient rotation sites we actually do our own like note you know documenting um so that kind of takes up a lot of time and you don't necessarily want to take documentation home you don't want to be doing work when you're like not at work so it's just easier and it's just a better thing to kind of finish it when you're there so typically i would wake up maybe around like I don't know, like seven ish, six thirty, six forty five ish, like closer to seven than before because my primary care rotation was like right down the street from my house. So I was so excited about that. I could literally like roll two steps and I was there. But so I woke up pretty like kind of late-ish, you know, got my devotion in, took a shower, got my kid off to school, dropped her off, and then I was able to actually go to the rotation site and start my day, which began at 8. Um, so patients didn't really come start coming until like 8.15, 8.30, so we got an opportunity beforehand to see exactly how many patients there were for the day. Um, I was on this rotation with another, like, another, I wasn't on the rotation with any other PA students. I was the first PA student that this particular site had ever had so it was like really a heavy burden on my shoulders I was like oh my gosh I have to like I have to do this for the PA profession and I have to make sure that um, they know that we are like actually adequate and competent and can do this um, so I was really excited about that opportunity but there were other students with me so there were NP students and med students at this site with me so we'd all get there around 8 you know between 8 and 810 um, sometimes Sometimes 8.30 depending on the day because on Mondays the days started at 9. Uh, so I would get there around that time, we would look at the patient list, kind of see who was coming in for the day. And then after that, like once patients started coming in, we were there. Like that was it. Like we'd see the patients first. So the MAs would go and they would triage the patient, you know, get the weight and vital signs, all of that good stuff. And then bring a little slip of paper with all of those vital signs for us and then kind of what their chief complaint were. If they were coming in for a lab review, we would get the paperwork from their last lab. Uh, and we would have to review that prior to going into the room and then go you know, in with a plan to talk to them about the things that we saw. If there was anything abnormal, any abnormal lab values, we'd talk to them about that. Uh, and if there wasn't anything abnormal, we'd just come in, say hi, if there were any new issues going on with them and kind of send them on their way. But typically once I got that paper, I would go through it. And then depending on what the chief complaint was, I would kind of gather myself, gather the information together, and then I would go in and uh, and I would go a little something like this. I'd be like, doo, doo, doo. hi, my name is Adana. I am the PA student, so what's bringing you in today? Now, if they were waiting for a little longer than expected, I'd be like, hi, my name is Adana. I'm the PA student that will be seeing you today. Thank you so much for your patience. I really appreciate it. We've been kind of slammed today, but um, I'm so grateful that you were really patient and waiting on us. So that really, I learned that from my first rotation ever. It just kind of like 
diminishes any kind of ill feeling, any type of animosity or you know tension in the air that patients tend to have when they're waiting for a long time. And a lot of times in outpatient offices, they wait for a pretty like you know significant amount of time. They may have been there earlier than their appointment should have started. So they're like trying to get in early and then, you know, their patients prior to them that their uh, actual appointment time runs a little bit longer. So it's always nice to kind of diffuse that situation. So I'd always go in and do that. I would just kind of get the history from them, what's bringing them in. If it was something, some type of acute issue, like a pain or nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, things like that, a rash, then I would tease that out with like my old cart. So the onset, you know, location, duration, um, um, the characteristic, anything making it better or worse, and then like have they done anything to treat it, and obviously severity of it, um, if it is pain. And then after that, I've gotten that history and I've written that down, and I've gotten their past medical history, then I would actually go in and again, listen to their heart and their lungs, make sure that all of that is in within normal limits, and then I would be more focused on exactly what area they were talking about. Now in primary care, people come in and they have so many different comorbidities. So a lot of people are coming in with like diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, like as a baseline. So um, just making sure that you're still doing, you know, patient education and counseling on that was also part of my daily, like what I talked to them about. And then after that, after I did my little kind of jazz with them in the room and I, I would ask them if they had any other questions for me and then um, I would let them know, okay, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go talk with the NP because I worked with an NP and I also worked with a physician. So um, I would either say I'd go talk to the NP and we'll come back and talk to you about everything or um, I would go and you know talk to the physician and I'd come back and talk to you about everything. So then I would go and I would present to my attending and I'd just let them know what's going on with the patient they would like put in some lab work if any lab work needed to be done any imaging needed to be done there was this really cool thing it was called a platysmograph um, where it looks like a um Oh man, what is that thing called? I can't remember right now. A pulse ox. So it looked like a pulse ox that you put on your hand, but it's like so much cooler because it talks, it kind of just shows you how your heart rate, how well your vessels are perfusing, like your peripheral arteries, um, and just kind of tells you maybe like how clogged some arteries or vessels in your body may be. Like, are you at 50%, 30%, um, 100%? free and clear. And it was a really cool tool that they had at this office that I was working at. And so we would talk to them about that as well. So when we went back into the room, we would address that, we would address the issue. I would obviously tell the physician what I felt my plan was. And then, you know, he would be like, okay, or well, what else? Or, you know, like, that's a good plan or things like that. We just discuss the patient, go back in the room, talk to the patient, um, advise them of the plan and then send them on their way. And I, that it was just like, do that, repeat, repeat, repeat. Um, and it was a pretty busy office. Uh, we'd see like over 20 patients a day in that, you know, eight to four, eight to five period. Like I said, um, I sometimes we had lunch, sometimes I didn't have a lunch. Like I'd just run downstairs, get a really quick snack because I wanted to make sure that I could write up all my notes. Um, and then after that, my day was done by four, four thirty, five o'clock. I can go home um, like do two little rolls on the way back home <laughs> and then like have my day, you know, just study and kind of enjoy family. And I really love that. Like outpatient, I really liked it because you get to spend so much more time talking to the patient and building relationships with the patient. And that is why, like, you know, I've talked to you guys about this a lot that although I want to do women's health, I want to also be able to have like that outpatient aspect where I can build these relationships with my patients. So, um, and this solidified it even more for me. And I was really excited. I had a great time and I did change, um, you know, the physician's mind on PAs and just kind of educate him a little bit more on the PA profession and what PAs can do, which I felt really, really proud about. Um, so I liked it, guys. I liked my, uh, my primary care rotation. I'm glad that it's over because now that means that I'm just a few steps closer to graduating. Um, but that was everything that I did on my primary care rotation. If you have any questions for me, anything like specific, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!